After his capitulation at Senecephali in 197 BC, King Philip of Macedon was allowed to remain in power, albeit as a client state of Rome. However, following Philip's death in 179 BC, his son and heir to the throne of Macedon, Perseus, was less willing to accept Roman control. King Perseus was an ambitious man. He began to restore Macedon as a regional power. Although Perseus knew that Rome would not allow the Macedonian king to break away from Roman control, he soon expects the Romans to send an army to Greece to ensure that their control over the region would not be eroded. As expected, the Romans were concerned that their de facto control over Greece would be under threat with the rise of King Philip and his Macedonian armies. The Romans soon declared war on Macedon. They sent an army led by the Roman consul Lucius Aemilius Paulus into Greek lands to confront King Perseus. Lucius Paulus commands an army of roughly 38,000 men, of which 34,000 were Roman legionary infantry and lighter velite skirmishers, with the remainder being cavalry, 22 African war elephants, and Roman allies from Italy and Greece. In preparation for a Roman invasion, King Perseus has gathered an army of roughly 40,000 men, of which more than 20,000 were the elite Macedon phalangites. Over 4,000 cavalry and the rest of his force were Thracian mercenaries and skirmishers. After campaigning across the country and days of maneuvering, both armies finally face each other near the coastal town of Pydna. The Roman infantry fought with short swords and large shields. In a head-on engagement with the Macedon phalanx, they would be cut to pieces very quickly. Aemilius knew this all too well, so he had stationed his Roman army atop a sloping hill. This maneuver was to take away any advantage that the Macedon phalanx infantry had on the flat terrain, where their long sarissa spears could be used to full effectiveness, thus causing devastation to the Roman infantry. At the center of the Macedon army were peltasts and skirmishers, followed by the elite phalangite Sarissa pikemen. These were the finest soldiers of the ancient world and were a key success to Alexander the Great's campaigns in the 3rd century BC. On the Macedon right flank was Perseus himself, along with his elite Aegema cavalry and some Thracian peltas and Greek archers. On the opposite end, the Roman left flank consisted of allied Italian and heavy Roman cavalry. On the Macedonian left flank were more Macedon heavy cavalry, along with Thracian infantry and peltasts. On the opposite end, the Roman right flank was made up of Rome's veteran Equite cavalry along with a large contingent of African war elephants that had been brought by Rome's Libyan allies. At the center of the battlefield, a skirmish erupted between the Roman and Macedon lighter troops.
Roman skirmishers had pushed back the Macedons. The Macedon skirmishers retreated to the left flank of their army. Upon seeing the outbreak of the skirmish battle, Perseus saw an opportunity to draw the Romans down from the uneven foothills of Mount Olacros. He marched his army forward with the Phalangites leading the way. Trying to buy more time for their comrades, the Roman light troops and skirmishers valiantly charge at the Macedon phalanx. Upon seeing this, Aemilius had given the orders for his men to march down the slopes and try to save his men. They were inevitably cut down. Although the skirmishers stood no chance against the Macedon phalanx, they were able to slow their advance and give the Romans time to probably form up into battle formation. After witnessing the slaughter of their lightly armoured comrades, the Roman legionaries became intimidated by the Macedonian war machine which marched upon them. Seeing that his men were frightened and losing morale, the consul Emilius quickly ordered his men to stop their advance and turn back up the slope to higher ground, thus giving his men a better fighting chance against the Macedon phalanx. Emilius' men successfully retreated up the slope and now had some time to reorganize their plan of attack. Emilius then rode to his right flank and then ordered his elephants and cavalry to charge forward and attack the Macedon's left flank, which was occupied by Thracian peltasts and infantry. Peltas were usually very effective at bringing down elephants and cavalry, however, they had been depleted from fighting the Roman light skirmishers earlier in the day, and thus the Romans rode right through them, cutting them down with very little resistance. Eventually a mass rout began, as the Thracians began fleeing and thus left the Macedonian Ajima cavalry out in the open and exposed, with no infantry or range support. The African war elephants, 
coupled with the Roman cavalry, was enough to smash through the Ajima cavalry and send them routing from the field of battle, ultimately destroying the Macedonian left flank entirely and leaving the Macedon phalanx at the centre exposed. Whilst the engagement on the right flank unfolded, the Macedon phalanx at the centre had been marching up the steep slopes in pursuit of the retreating Roman legions. Upon their pursuit, the Macedon phalanx had lost its tightly packed formation whilst marching up the rough and uneven terrain, and gaps within their ranks began to open. This provided the Romans with a great opportunity to attack. With the Macedon left flank completely exposed, the Roman right flank was ordered to advance and attack the Macedonian left flank. As the phalanx kept advancing, more gaps began to open within their ranks. Aemilius, noticing this, ordered his men to attack right between the phalanx's gaps. The Roman centurions led their legionaries into the exposed areas of the Macedonian phalanx. Simultaneously, the Roman left flank was ordered to charge and attack the Macedon right flank where King Perseus himself was stationed. Just like on the opposite side of the battlefield, the Roman cavalry cut right through the Greek and Thracian skirmishers and attacked Perseus's personal cavalry contingent. At the center, the Macedon phalanx was being assaulted from multiple sides and was quickly deteriorating. As the feat looked inevitable, men from the Macedon center began breaking formation and retreating. The final nail in the coffin came when the regrouped Roman right flank had returned and charged at the rear of the depleted Macedonians, causing the Macedon soldiers to begin routing in mass. Left flank, Perseus's Ajima cavalry were the last Macedon units to fall. They had sacrificed themselves while their king was able to flee from the battlefield. They had all fought to their death. At this point of the battle, defeat was inevitable for the Macedons, and the remainder of their army retreated from the battlefield. The estimated losses were reported as such. The Roman losses were reported at just a few hundred, which seems rather unlikely, while the Macedonians suffered roughly 20,000 losses, with 11,000 of their soldiers being captured. It was reported that Perseus was captured and was sent back to Rome as a prisoner. 
Upon his return to Rome, the consul Emilius marched through the streets of Rome with his victorious soldiers following him. He was then given the title Macedonicus by the Roman Senate. After this battle, the age of the phalanx came to an end. The Roman legions ruled the battlefield for many centuries to come.